Um, to start with, um, uh, we are Cube Training, and um, we've got two websites, uh, www.learninstallation.co.uk. And I'm, I'm hoping to post these videos uh, in our website. Um, so that's, I mean, in case if someone missed this webinar, uh, they can go to the website and then they can view these webinars. Because um, I do get a lot of emails about the slides and, um, and the videos and stuff. Um, but you can go to the website and get it. But we haven't managed to do it yet. So it's going to be in future. So um, we're going to definitely post all these webinars in, in, um, on our website. And um, then we have CCTV DVR system. .uk. That's one of the old websites that we use, but we're still using that website. So you, and it's got quite a lot of articles and so on. So you can, you know, so, so it starts sort of, uh, you know, learning more about intruder alarm systems. Um, okay, so I've got. Uh, so this is a center where we're based. Uh, we're based in uh, Gravesend, Kent, um, not far from Dartford Tunnel. Um, so that's where we're based. We, uh, we also have a branch, uh, or we had a branch in Birmingham, but we no longer have it. Um, but I mean, we, uh, we might have it again, but we're not, we're not really sure, you know. Um, but we now only from Gravesend, is uh, close to Dartford. All right, uh, so what we're going to cover today is uh, introduction to intro alarm installation, alarm circuitry, risk assessment, intro alarm designing. Uh, the objective is the participants will have a good understanding of domestic alarm installation. Um, you should have a basic understanding to do this course, uh, sorry, webinar. Um, you should have, in the sense, you should know a basic electronic circuits, you know, um, if you know about like diodes, capacitors and resistors, it's definitely gonna help you. Uh, but don't worry too much about it. I'm gonna sort of go through that anyway. Um, so start with what are the basic components of an intruder alarm system? Um, so you have panel detectors, so you've got different types of detectors. So for example, you have, um, you could have uh, things like door contacts, passive infrared, uh, panic alarm, mm, then, then again, maybe smoke, heat, you know, all these are different types of detectors. Then you have the panel, uh, then you've got output and input. Now output could be something like um, bell as an output, um, stroke, and also you can have communications uh, devices connected to the output. So uh, all this will be classified as output. So because some of the panels, you do have um, separate uh, terminals for bell. Some panels you don't have. So you have to program the output. So uh, and the reason I call it output rather than calling it a bell. Um, then you have input. So input is basically, again, you've got programmable input. Inputs can be programmed. Uh, so what does the input do is um, you could connect this um, input. The, um, so sorry, let me go back to this slide again. Uh, so you could use this input uh, to connect another system to your system. So for example, uh, another system input can come to your system and that can trigger certain things, you know, so you can use input and output. So you've got input, output. Then the other thing about input is that um, you have um, keypad can also be seen as an input because obviously it then do, uh, it sends data and receive data, but you have to uh, sort of connect the keypad. So that can also be seen as an input. Um, then again, you have your um, COM port where you could use uh, the software to program the system and use the COM port uh, instead of the keypad. In a, um, so in, in, a, in a commercial application, it's quite difficult for you to go to the keypad and program because physically the keypad may be somewhere in the hallway and the panel may be somewhere down in the uh, riser cabinet. So it's not that easy for you to sort of, you know, walk to the riser cabinet to the hallway. So it's easy for you to carry your laptop with the, with the right software, you can connect it to the panel and then you can start programming it. And okay, also you can save this one. So in case if something goes wrong, you have a backup copy of all the setting that you have in that panel. So um, it is, so you, you could use the COM port uh, to, uh, to program the system. So normally what happens with the texture COM uh, is, um, 
I mean, Mercer system is pretty much the same uh, same thing. But with the Texacom, you get a small dongle, which is like a lead that connects one side of it's like a USB that goes to the laptop. The other side will then go and connect to the COM port and to the panel. Then you can now start sort of programming the panel, so you don't necessarily have to have the keypad with you. Um, mains, of course, you need to have the power mains. Uh, normally, the mains, uh, oh, oh, the mains should come from a, a, a unswitched fuse spur. Now, what it, what it says is it has to be a, a, a tamper-proof manner, right? So the best way to do that is using an unswitched fuse spur. You could connect it to the panel. So the unswitched fuse spur not necessarily have to come from a dedicated circuit. It can come from an existing ring. So that's absolutely fine. Uh, there's no necessary for you to run a dedicated circuit. Now, now you, this is a very gray, gray area because obviously you have to have electrical knowledge to do this. Uh, and certainly if you have to run a, a separate circuit, you've got to be electrician to do that in the UK. Um, but again, if you're doing an unswitched fuse spur, um, you, you know, if you have to prove that you're a competent person. So that's a different uh, segment. I'll cover that in a, um, how to get the competencies for you to do that. Um, then you have the battery. So battery work as a backup systems. Um, so you could um, use the battery uh, to, uh, um, in, in case the main fails, obviously the battery is going to hold the system for some time, you know, so it, it's used as a uh, backup systems. Okay, so what are the basic components of an uh, intruder alarm system? Um, do you guys have any experience in installing an intruder alarm system? So let me know. Okay, right. Okay, right. Louis says it's better to put uh, always uh, on an RCD. Um, RCD, you can't put it on RCD. It has to be on a breaker, and the breaker needs to be protected by the RCD, right? Uh, so you could go uh, inside the RCD. Obviously, it has to be inside the RCD with the new compliance 18 edition. Uh, so what happens is if you go inside the RCD, so what you're trying to say is it has to go on a separate breaker. If it's the case, you have to be an electrician to do that, or you have to get an electrician to do that for you because you're, you're making changes to the consumer unit, right? Um, but if you're coming out from a spur, uh, so if, you're, if you're coming out from the existing ring, you're spurring it out, then you don't necessarily have to uh, uh, notify the building controls, right? So that's what it is, yeah. So yeah, you could go, um, you could go on a separate breaker, uh, but again, there's no necessity to do that because why would you do that? Because in case the main fails, you still have the battery to keep the system for a certain uh, in a duration. So there's no necessary to do that. Uh, but again, you know, if you're an electrician, uh, you would rather go uh, to a separate breaker. Okay. Right. Um, so what, what are socket, for, or put it on a socket with RCD and you don't charge, change anything. No, what, yeah, yeah, you can put it on the, now Louis say you can put it on a, put, put it in a socket with RCD. Yeah, you could do that. The, 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 the main function of RCD, does anyone know what RCD does? No. Okay, RCD gives protection against any earth leak, right? That's what it does. And it's very sensitive, so it trips after 30 milliamps mm -hmm. very quick to uh, isolate or, or disconnect the power, right? So, uh, you know, going on RCD, it's just trying to get the protection of, because obviously it's a metal cover, uh, so you, you want to monitor the earth leakage, right? Um, that's, the, that's the whole idea about doing it. Uh, but you don't, uh, you, you know, you have to refer to BS7671 so you get a good understanding of what needs to be done. But as far as the alarm is concerned, any circuit that you have in the house, it is RCD protected, right? So even if you go in a ring, just, you know, plug it with a socket, it's still RCD protected, but you can't do that because it's not a tamper through way. Uh, so it's still RCD protected. So coming out from a spur, it, it's, it's, um, it's absolutely fine, yeah? So we, we look at, we'll look into it in detail. Uh, in, in, in our upcoming webinars, right? Um, 
But it's, it's a good point. It's a very good point. Um, so when you, when you look at the basic components of uh, an alarm system, so I'll go back to this slide now. Um, so, so anyone can guess what are the basic components? Like, you know, let's come to the detector side of it. Uh, what are the uh, you know, most common detectors that you find? Yeah, what are the most common detectors you find in alarm systems? Okay. Yeah, the motion uh, motion detection, which is basically uh, PARs, right? Um, PARs, yep. Um, door contacts, um, and then you got uh, panic alarm. So you got the various type of uh, you know, and you you can have, uh, for example, uh, le uh, water leakage. You know, uh, so you you got vibration uh, detectors. So you have got a number of, uh, and also uh, break glass. You know, that's another one. Uh, so there's quite a few. Yeah, yeah, glass breaker exactly. So there's quite a few um, that you know you have. But they all we're going to look into the principle of it. You know how they work. You know. Uh, so what what you see here is a door contacts, right? Now in the door contacts here. Um, so let me use the pointer. You see this part, like a glass fuse. This is a relay, right? This relay opens. Um, when you do open the door, because the, this relay is magnetized, right? So the relay, when the magnet is right next to the relay, the relay should be always closed. So it's a normally closed circuit. So when you open the door, so that means you're taking the magnet apart from the, uh, the, the main uh, um, door contact, That's then the relay mean. opens, right? Uh, so this is, and also it's got a spring, which then monitors the tamper. So if someone's trying to take and close her out, um, he then uh, monitor the tamper, right? So we're going to look into this circuitry, how these ones work. You know, and if you look, if, if you look into the circuitry, um, they all pretty much work in the same principle, right? So you've got door contacts, very common one. Uh, then you've got PARs. Um, now, I'm not going to ask you, like, do you know different types of PARs that you get in, 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 alarm, in alarm installation? But I'm just going to ask you, do, do you guys... Are, do you guys agree with me that there are different types of PARs uh, in terms of the functionalities of the PARs, in terms of uh, the complexity? Do you think that all PARs work in the similar way, or do you think the PARs, uh, the PAR, every PAR, uh, there are different types of PARs used various techniques to uh, detect the mo uh, 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 movement? Yeah. So there are different types of PARs. You could have a PAR with a passive infrared, which predominantly use the heat energy, right, uh, to to know the presence of summons or the presence of movement. Um, and then you have ultra, uh, oh, no. uh, sorry, uh, you, you have sorry, you have microwave. Um, uh, so you got different types of uh, PARs, right? Um, so, so it's not only they just work with uh, passive uh, infrared. And um, then you have keypads. Um, you've got different types of keypads again, um, you know, flash mounted, surface mounted, uh, when it comes to the sort of, you know, how you mount them. And then also some keypads uh, do give you the options of using hot keys like panic alarm um, in a part set and so on. So, yeah, you have different types of keypads. Then you've got the bell. Yeah, so you've got different ones. I really like these ones because uh, uh, they got like a transparent covers. Um, and it's got LED inside. So if you if you're running a small company, you could imprint your logo here, and then someone you know drive past that property, they can see your logo uh, kind of glowing, you know, in the dark. So I really like this uh, called Delta Bell um, um, from uh, <coughs> from Castle, I believe. But you, you could find I'll, I can give you the link to buy them. So so you could pretty much uh, tailor make these uh, bell covers. So you could order. Uh, they, there'll be a minimum quantity, and uh, so you can order that minimum quantity. Then they're going to cost you like two to three pounds, but you can get your logo printed on it. Um, so you don't need to buy the whole module. Uh, so you can have it once you get a job, and um, then you can start just putting this cover so it looks like kind of customized for your, your own company. Um, obviously, you've got the battery backup. Um, the backup batteries, the most common ones are the seven amp batteries for the intruder alarm, right? So it's a 7 amp battery, 12 volt, uh, 7 amp DC uh, power. I don't know why. Then you got the cables, right? Uh, so eight core cable is what I would normally, you know, go for. But you can also get the screen one. So the ones that shielded. So that's better to use. Um, you got six core, eight core, 
And it's, I don't see much difference in, when it comes to pricing with six core and eight cores. I would rather just go with eight core. Uh, bear in mind, these are not Cat5 cable. They're not twisted pairs. Uh, they're just simple sort of uh, aluminium cables. So they, the resistance levels are far, it's slightly different from a Cat5 cable. And then com as far as the communication is concerned, then you have different um, communication devices like uh, Dualcom, uh, Redcare, Webway. So this is a, a Dualcom. Uh, so that will be connected. So what does this do? This allows you to uh, send signals to alarm listening centers um, for the police response and, and various other responses, right? Uh, and they, they do communicate to uh, alarm listening center uh, using number of paths. So it's not only by GSM, it's not only by GPRS, it's not only by uh, a telephone line. So it's, it's, you know, you can use number of paths to send the signals. So, um, so we look into uh, those uh, communication side of it in a different webinar. And of course, you've got a panel. So panel is, the, is like more like the brain, which controls the whole systems, right? So everything normally have to be wired to the panel. So you've got a panel here. Um, these are zones. You can see that these zones. So it's one got zone one to uh, zone eight. Um, then you've got, these are your bell connections, SAB, uh, keypad connections, uh, speakers, auxiliary output, uh, fault. Um, then you also have your battery, DC. Um, the wires. Um, yes, and obviously there are ports here, uh, which you can't see that obviously you can connect that to the um, your laptop. Right. So pretty much it's, 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 a, it's more like a ring type of, uh, hmm. sorry, uh, a star type of connection. So we're connecting it, everything to the panel. So panel is your brain. So everything will be connected to the panel. And when you do installation, it's quite easy to do that way because if you can yeah. then hire um, first fix engineers or technicians who can now run pull the cables so they can bring cable from each end to just one central point where you where you're gonna site the panel you know so it's easier to work in that way but again having said that you don't necessarily have to do that there are different ways to do that you can do bus network and so on you know um for example risco gives you a different type of wiring um so this is what we normally do for this um webinar we're looking at a small installation for a domestic so what you do is you decide where the panel is going and we know where the uh, sensors are going to be mounted and you're just building a cable from every sensor to the panel so it's more like a sort of a star uh, type of wiring uh, so the panel is this, it's a brain and it provides the power to all uh, devices uh, so for example PARs and everything that require power the power is centralized it comes from the panel um, and it controls all the circuits and it makes data communication with devices like keypad expanders and so on um, and also any any fault uh, that presents in the panel it indicates with LEDs uh, LCDs you know various type of uh, 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 displays can indicate any faults um, it can communicate with external and internal devices um, Okay, so when you come to an alarm system, you've got different grades, right? Grade one, grade two, grade three, and grade four. Uh, grade one, we're not going to discuss much about grade one, and same with the grade four, and I'll tell you why that is. Um, grade one is a DIY system. So if you go to BNQ, I mean, if it's in the UK, you probably know BNQ, Screwfix, you find the alarm system. Most systems are not compliant to the standard. They're compliant to the electrical standard, not for the alarm standard. The alarm standard is EN501 e e uh, Um Right, so that's um, EN50131, mm -hmm. and that's the alarm standard. So, if you look into the panel, you'll see uh, it's printed on the panel, uh, it's compliance to the standard. Uh, then, it will now tell you what grade is fall under and what class is fall under. Right, so grade the, uh, the grade one is um, it, it, there's no grade ones, obviously, it's a, it's a non compliance panels, these are DIY panels that you can buy in the uh, with, with retailers. Um, then it, the, the, the compliance actually starts from uh, grade two systems. Um, so uh, what these grade two systems is, um, one second. Right, so what these grade two systems, uh, uh, grade two systems are uh, uh, systems that probably uh, will suit uh, for um, places like domestics, uh, domestic and small commercial. Right now, if you look at the definition for the grade two system, it says the intruder uh, would not have uh, a good understanding of how an alarm system works, but he may 
he may carry some basic tools with him, like pliers and you know, so, sort of things. You know, uh, when it, when you come to grade three system, the intruder we expect the intruder to have a good understanding of the alarm system, so he may carry some sophisticated tool uh, to to to, to um, stop the alarm system from working. Uh, so grade three systems are most probably going to be like commercial side of it, you know, commercial um and and um and and also some domestic may also demand for a grade three system so what is great for system great for systems are fully customized systems now if you go to an in any manufacturer's website you would never see a great for system so it's just like if you have a uh different requirement uh a very unique requirement then you can talk to the manufacturer and get it done uh, so you're customizing the whole solution for yourself so that's a great for system and it poses a high it has to be like a very high risk environments right um, I can think of anything like Ministry of Defense and so on, you know. Um, right, so that's these are the grades. So what we're going to work with is we're going to work with grade two and grade three, right? Um, is there any other way? Uh, so if, you, if you've been called uh, to do a domestic alarm installation, how would you define <laughs> the grade? Um, is there any other way we can call a, a, a governing body or, or different external bodies to find out what grades that we should be using for that property? Now, if you if you look at how things work in the UK, is that if anything's if some if someone break into a place um, um, or if somebody experience a, a burglary, um, then they would now go for the insurance company, uh, so they make a claim, uh, and the, and the claim will be assessed by the insurance company. So of course, the insurance companies um, are the ones um, who, at the end of the day, going to decide uh, whether to uh you know let the claim goes through right uh, so uh, the insurance companies have a database of uh different type of properties and what type of uh, grades they would minimum grades required for that property so that's a, another uh way of finding uh what exactly, yeah what exactly you should be sort of having uh for, for that property but um to to make it um so just to talk in in the, in the general uh, point of view um any domestic properties most of 90 percent of domestic properties great system is more than enough any commercial properties like off license uh, um, uh shops retail uh great three system would be um uh, uh you know more than enough to sort of cover uh cover the uh, sort of the place and also you have to bear in mind signaling also have different grades so um they also come with grade one to grade four uh, so you have to then know what type of signaling that you're going with um, okay, so let's go to the next one. So these are small exercises for uh, when people do the courses, uh, when they do the course uh, with us. Uh, relay. So what is a relay? Relay is a simple switch operated by different techniques. Um, for example, in a door contact, the relay is operated by the magnet, so it's magnetized. And a PAR, the relay is operated by uh, a, a heat, you know, uh, obviously the heat that generated, uh, that generated by an object. Um, then you've got break glass, uh, the relay is operated by the, the frequency, the, uh, the noise that you get by, you know, smashing the glass. Uh, so there are different sort of ways to sort of operate this relay. Um, so this is a relay. So uh, pre previously I've showed you this glass fuse in a door context. So these uh, are normally sort of, uh, this is how the relay looked like, but in a normal circumstance, when you bring this magnet right close to this place, uh, this will push this against this, and then they will close the circuit. So there'll be like a normally closed circuit uh, in a normal circumstance. Um, then you've got tamper. So you, you also have to have a tamper circuit. Um, the idea behind this is uh, if you just only have one circuit, uh, the circuit only get active when you set the system, isn't it? So if you're going uh, out, um, then you will now go and set the system. Uh, once you set the system, the circuit is uh, set. Now, if somebody tried to open the circuit, it's, the alarm system is going to uh, go off. But again, um, when you're there in the property, you're not going to set the alarm system. Uh, so you're going to leave the alarm system as unset. So in that, uh, when you do unset, uh, there is a possibility someone can tamper. Someone can just open this end closer uh, and then tamper with this circuit. Now you don't want to do that. You don't want anyone to do that. So now what you do is you deploy another circuit called tamper circuit. So you now have two circuits. So 
it's quite important to understand this here. So you've got two circuit in a basic alarm circuit. One is for the relay circuit, or you can call it switch read alarm. It doesn't matter. You can use any name, but it's, it's basically get activated once you set the system. So if you don't set the system, you're okay to open the door, you're okay to close the door, you know, it's not going to set, uh, it's not going to uh, set the alarm or it's not going to, uh, you know, make the alarm go off. But again, uh, if uh, there's another circuit, which is monitoring the tamper. So if someone opened the enclosure, it's going to go off. Now the tamper circuit, it's always active. So it's pretty much like a 24 hours tamper circuit. The only way you could deactivate a tamper circuit is by entering the engineer code. So once you enter the engineer code into the panel, it will deactivate or it will freeze the tamper circuit. So now you're allowed to open the enclosure. Right now, this is the problem you're going to come up with if someone buy a house and they inherit an alarm system, uh, then they don't know the password or the code. Uh, so, and it, and uh, if you go there without knowing the code, there's no way you could open uh, the alarm system, any of these uh, uh, detectors or PAR or door contact. If you do open it, it's going to go off. They might have a part code for themselves that that's not an engineer code. That is a manager code or user code. You need to have the engineer code to go and open the system and work uh, and do any work with the system. Now, you, the engineer code differs. Every company will use their own engineer code. In fact, they change the engineer code from default to their own preferred engineer code. So without getting, um, uh, you know, getting in touch with the company, you would never know what engineer code is. Um, there are some system you could put them on default factory mode, but still, you can't you still have to set the system off and then you know take all the uh, sirens off then put it on default setting uh, but again you have to check uh, with the manufacturer whether you are allowed to do that or whether you, the software will allow you to do it right so, so it's important for you to understand about the engineer code so this is what i'm saying so you you have these two circuits in one alarm circuit this this one is alarm circuit and that's your tamper circuit Right, so now you're, you can see that two circuit here, right? So what is normally open, normally closed? Uh, this will probably sort of give you an idea. Normally closed means you can see that circuit is closed. Normally open means circuit is open. With the alarm system, 95% of the alarm system, I can even say 99, but I'll say 95, is normally closed circuit. Because if it's a normally open circuit, it's quite difficult to monitor uh, an uh, a tamp, isn't it? Because the circuit is open, right? So it's most most of the time you're going to come across normally closed circuit. Um, so you don't need to worry too much about normally open circuit. So now what I explained to you before, I've got it here. I've got the tamper and then I've got the alarm here, right? So you can see the alarm, that's your alarm circuit and that's your tamper circuit, right? And that's your magnet, which then close the circuits, right? Um, let me get the next one. Now, if you look at a PAR, it works slightly different. You've got two alarm, uh, again, alarm circuit and tamper circuit, but the alarm circuit is also normally closed. Tamper circuit is also normally closed. Tamper circuit, uh, I try to draw a spring uh, or tamper. This is the best I could get, right? So now say the spring has to be pressed for this to be closed. So if somebody take the closer out, this will open this circuit. So that becomes a fault right tamper and it's going to set off the system now similar here similarly here you've got the tamp alarm circuit um so if someone walk past there's a sensor and it sends infrared rays and someone walk past that and um, this will this circuit will open and that's how you know there's uh, someone in the room right so you got alarm circuit tamper circuit but the alarm circuit is only active um it's active all the time but it's only going to set the alarm uh, it's only going to send signal to the system when you set the system. If you don't set the system, uh, you're allowed to walk in that room. Nothing's going to happen, right? Whereas the tamper circuit is concerned, if you go and try to open the enclosure, it's going to go off. Right. So now there are different types of uh, PARs you could buy. Now I'm looking at a basic model. Uh, this is a Honeywell uh, PAR. Now if you look at it, you got like terminals. Now I call them terminals. Yeah. You got E2, D1. This is your alarm circuit. Right, going back here, this is what I'm talking about. Right, alarm circuit. Then you got NCC. That's your um, uh, alarm circuit, right? Or read, or relay, or switch. You know, you could call it uh, with different names. 
Now, why would they call it uh, NC, not NO? Does anyone know why they call it NC? It's a normally closed circuit, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's a normally it's a normally closed circuit, right? So if you so that's why they call it NC. And what C stand for is common, right? And um, then you got V uh, minus and V plus. Obviously, that's your power, DC power. Most of the time, they work with 12 volt, uh, so you got 12 volt uh, ground. Sorry, minus and plus, right? And that's the old sensor part, which is gonna detect any movement. Now, going back to this slide, uh, these type of wiring, we call it double pole wiring. Now you can understand why we call it double pole, because you've got two circuit there, yeah, double pole wiring. Easy to do, what, what are the advantage of double pole wiring? Uh, it's very easy to understand, easy, in, but no resistance required. Uh, so all you have to do is just to run four cables from uh, your uh, PAR, four cables. Now I'm going to ignore this part. Obviously, you know, this has to be, you have to run two cables for the power that's go to the auxiliary in, in the panel, but you have to run four cables that goes back to the panel. So it's very simple when it comes to wiring. Now the downside of doing double pole is it's unsupervised loop. So it's not supervised, right? And it's not an active loop. Um, so the, these are the, so it's pretty much like a DIY wiring. So it's unsuitable for any system that demand for an alarm receiving center response or known as arc, right? So if you're installing a system and connecting it to the police, you shouldn't be using a double pole method. It has to be end of line, right? So this is a double pole method and you should not be using it if you are connecting for a police response. So now you come to end of line. Right, so what is this end of line? End of line is using resistors to monitor the circuit, right? Um, so in order for us to understand end of line, we need to understand what is it's meant by resistor. So what does a resistor do, right? Let's learn. Now, a resistor will regulate the power, the, the voltage, right? So if you have a certain voltage and you use a resistor, depends on the resistor value, the voltage would be uh, reduced. Now imagine like a, uh, a speed dump. When you drive your car at 30 miles per hour, uh, when you pass the speed dump, or when you come close to speed dumps, so you're gonna uh, you're gonna slow down the car, or it's it's gonna slow down anyway, because obviously the, the speed dumps are designed to slow you down, right? So it's a similar way. Resistors will regulate the voltage, right? So how do you know the resistor? Uh, value or how do you read it? It's by the color bands. You have color bands, so each colors represent different values, and you based on that you could read uh, a, a resistor, right? Uh, for example, brown is one, red is uh, um, two, and black is zero, and then brown is again one, right? So I'm not going to go through the reading of it, but you know, obviously. Um, you know, we will cover it in a different uh, webinar. But again, the other way of reading that is uh, using um, a multimeter. So if you put the multimeter uh, to these two legs, you will now know the resistor value. But again, it's very good to understand how the color coding works uh, because then you would know. Yes, there's a bit. Yes, that's fine. Uh, then you would know. Um, let me go back to the slide again. Okay, it's different. So they will, it's easy for you to find out. For example, if I'm looking for a 1K resistor, if it's a brown, it gives me an idea what resistor value that, uh, uh, what, what, you know, what color that I should be looking for. So, so brown is one. Um, and if I'm looking for two, anything like 2.2 .2 or 20, then it should be red. If I'm looking for 4K resistors, I'm sure you be looking for the resistor that starts with the yellow band. Uh, so likewise, uh, it's good to know that. Um, right, so how does this end of line works? So end of line is like the end of the line, you now deploy a resistor, which then controls the flow of the current, right? Um, 
So I'm going to go through this uh, detail uh, a bit later, but just going to skip this one for the time being. So you have a video, I can go through this. Okay. So now you can see this, this is a, the PAR, right? They've got T2, uh, T1, that's your um, tamper circuit, right? Now you see these coppers here. Um, so the coppers need to be connected to the uh, encloser to close the tamper circuit, right? Um, then you have NC and C, right? So if I bring it closer, right, NC and C, right? Uh, so NC and C is your alarm circuit. Then you've got V minus and V plus, right, which is your uh, power, right? Um, so now this is resistor, right? Now this is, we are trying to install um, a PAR, <coughs> sorry, PAR for a Honeywell system. So they use 1K, 1K resistor. So you need to find out what they're using. So 1K, 1K is, is a resistor that starts with ground. So you now sort of join these two resistors, right? So they use 1K for uh, tamper, 1K for alarm. So you join these two resistors. Um, then you're connecting the resistors. Uh, the, 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 the legs that you join together goes to C. Then the other leg goes to NC. Then the other legs goes to T2, right? Um, sorry. Now, you will connect your alarm cable to NC. So that's the NC, right? And you will connect the alarm cable to NC. And then you connect the tamper cable to T1, right? So that's, uh, that's your common um, way of sort of twisted two legs and sending it to the common, yeah? That's one of the reasons we call it common, yeah? So if you look at it, I normally take, kind of fold it so they don't touch, yeah? So now that one is your, um, so if I go a bit, right. So now that one is your um, um, alarm uh, resistor, which is 1K. In this case, like it's, they, they use the same value, 1K and 1K when you come to Honeywell. But if you go to different make, they may use different values. So the 1K goes between NC to C, then from C to T2, okay, T2 or T1, you'll have, so if you look at that, there you're gonna have like your second resistor that goes to uh, common to T1, right? Now you're gonna take two cables out from this uh, installation. Um, you take your tamper always from the terminal where you don't have any resistor leg at all. So that will be the first one, right? Then you take your alarm uh, cable from the terminal, which says NC, uh, which will have only one resistor leg, which will be your uh, alarm resistor, right? Um, so let me just um, do this with a whiteboard. Right, so this is what we have here. Now I'll call it um, T1, right? Then I've got T2. Then I've got NC. Then I've got C. So you know what this stands for, yeah? NC is normally closed, C is common. T1 and T2, they both tamper, right? So, uh, what happens is, yeah, first you have uh, your, first you need to find out what is the resistor value that you should be using for alarm. Now, bear in mind with Honeywell, they're using 1K, but again, if you go to Texacom, it's 4.7. Now, if you go to a different make, it may be a different value. So you need to know that value, right? So let's take Honeywell. So you're gonna put 1K here. So 1K from here to here, right? So that's your one kilo ohm resistor, right? Then see, this one is your common, isn't it? So now you're gonna run another, the other resistor, which is your tamper resistor. That's again one K here. That will be then connected to T2. Right, that's 
the best I can do, right? The ohm sign, yeah, that's the ohm sign, right? So now you can see that that's a common, right? And that's NC, that's T1. Now you would now take two cables back to the panel, right? So this is your tamper, and this is your alarm cable, right? Now, so that's what we show you in this video. So if you if I just go a little bit back. So that's what we're doing here, right? We're joining that two cable, uh, two resistors together and running it to NC. Then one goes to T, T1 or T2. And then there you get the yellow cable that goes as a tamper and the blue one along. Right. So, that's how you do an end of line wiring, right? Now, having said that, you don't necessarily have to use resistors uh, when you decide to buy a PAR, which comes with inbuilt resistor, but you still have to uh, change the resistor value and have an understanding of an end of line verb so that you can you know, successfully do all the configuration with the PAR, right? So what is this class? Um, Class, if you look at a panel or PAR, uh, by compliance, they would now say what code of practice they're compliant to. Uh, in this case, it would be EN501. And um, then it will tell you what grade it falls under, grade one, grade two, grade three, grade four. As I mentioned to you before, there's no grade one or grade four, so it will be either grade two or grade three. Then it also tells you what class it falls under. So what the class means, it, it's pretty much like, if there's an electrician, you'll understand IP66, IP68, IP55. It's just talking about the environmental class. So you have class one, class two, class three, and class four. Class one and class two for indoor. And class three and class four outdoor. So what's the difference between class one and class two? Class one is a controlling uh, indoor environment. So anything like dust free with air condition. Uh, so you're not gonna expect a lot of dust. Um, uh, you know, that, that's what we call class one. Um, a class two would be an indoor, but still, you know, it's subjected to dust uh, um, and also all other factors. So it's not a place where everything is controlled. Um, then you have class three and class four. Class three is pretty much outdoor, but then again, you, you might have, uh, it's not fully exposed uh, to the mother nature. So it's like basically you, you'll have uh, something like a car wash place, you know, so you have a sunset. So that's outdoor, but still, uh, you're not going to get Fully, you're not fully exposed to uh, uh, the snow or, or rain and stuff like that. Uh, but again, class four is that you could, you could put it anywhere, it doesn't matter, but it will now tell you what operating Celsius it works under, but then you can just put it in a place where it's snowing, uh, raining, doesn't matter. So in reality, what you're gonna get is you only get class two and class four. You will not get class one or class three because anything like class classified as class two would work with any indoor environment. And similarly, anything that classified as class four can work on any outdoor environment, right? But in theory, you have four classes. So now looking at the PAR side of it, how they work, it sends infrared uh, uh, arrays, right? So when someone crosses it, um, then what happens is it measures the heat energy. Uh, so in a room, it, it measures the heat energy. So when you cross it, as a human, we generate heat. So now we'll make changes to the room temperature. And through that, it then yeah, it identifies the movement. And that's how the PAR works. Now, why I'm explaining this to you is that then you know where not to cite a PAR. Now, you shouldn't cite a PAR, uh, which can, um, uh, something, so for example, looking at a radiator, because in some houses, you can put the radiator uh, to a timer. And even if you're not in the house, the radiator may, may work. So in that case, once there's a rapid change to the room temperature, if it's a PAR looking at a radiator, it may just go off, right? And um, so you need to make sure that you don't, uh, the PAR is not looking straight into a radiator or window, you know, because uh, obviously uh, when the windows, uh, when the blinds are open, the sunlight can also uh, trigger the PARs. So conservatory and so on, you know, you need to bear in mind, PARs can be big problematics when they're just working with the infrared, right? Um, but again, you, you find different types of PARs. You've got dual-tech PARs. And so dual-tech PARs is not only using 
the, the heat energy. They also use different other form of uh, things to sort of uh, detect the movement. For example, uh, microwave, right? Uh, so microwave uh, and, and the uh, heat. So both combined, it can give an accurate reading. So that's, that's a good thing about this dual tech one. Um, so you, you have different sort of uh, features with these, uh, you know, latest PARs. Pulse rate. So what is this pulse rate? Every, every PAS you come across, you're going to get like a pulse rate. So you can change the pulse rate to high, low, and, uh, you know, the lowest point, uh, which then if, if, if the object need to move a bit low, like uh, it has to be a huge movement for, for the detectors to go off. And by doing it, you could minimize the false alarm. You know, so that's the whole point about the pulse rate. But always refer to manufacturer uh, manuals and the recommendation before you do that, right? So you can leave it on the standard uh, default setting. So I did uh, explain about where not to place a PAR, yeah, anything like radiators, iron, direct sunlight, fan, air conditions, air vent, anything that can make change to your room temperature. Um, then you don't want the PARs looking at it. And certainly you don't want the PARs to overlap. And that can also create problems, you know, so you don't want to, you don't want the PAR to overlap. So when you design a system, to bear in mind, if there's a window, then you probably put the PAR in the opposite direction, not facing the window, you know, so that's, that's the best way of doing it. Um, but uh, the, the one thing you have to remember is not like CCTV. You don't need to capture the, every single corner of the room. When you put a PAR, you're just angling away so that when someone walk, past that PAR is going to trigger because obviously no one can sort of commit a burglary by staying in one corner, right? And uh, so the, the, the understanding of this compared to CCTV is, is two different things. CCTV, you're trying to, you know, uh, get maximum coverage, but here you don't have to. Uh, you just have to get an angle so that, you know, when someone walks past that, you're going to catch that person. Okay, so that's okay. So now we're going to look at the keypad wiring. Um, so keypad wirings now, uh, uh, PARs. Now you can buy a Honeywell PAR connected to a Texacom system or Pyronic systems, or, uh, or known as zero panels, or you can connect it to uh, a Honeywell system. Doesn't matter. So a PA, because they're circuit, they just work by the circuitry. Uh, you can connect them to any systems, right? So it's more like a conversion way of uh, conversion way of making the PARs work so that, because they just simply activate the circuit so it doesn't matter whether it's a Honeywell PAR that you're connecting to Texacom or it's a Texacom PAR that you're connecting to Texacom but when it comes to the keypad anything that make a data communication um, it's got to be the same brand so if it's a Honeywell it's got to be Honeywell if it's a Texacom it's got to be Texacom right um, so the data how it works is pretty much like RS485 in CCTV data transmitted data received Right, so in, in Texacom, we got TR, transmit data, receive data. Obviously, you need to have power, so plus and minus 12 volt and zero volt. Now, if you, if you go to Honeywell, you, you're gonna get it as uh, A and B, then plus and minus, right? And if you go to Europanel or Pyronix, you're gonna get D1, D2, D3, and D4, right? Now, the good news is you're not gonna connect a Texacom keypad to uh, Europanel, or you're, gonna, you're not gonna connect Texacom to Honeywell. So whatever the abbreviation that you see in the, in the, in the PAR, sorry, in the, the keypad, you would say the same thing in the panel. So you're not gonna have a lot of confusion about how to connect these cables, right? So this is a uh, Texacom again. So this is, what, this is where the connections work. So this is the network terminal where you're gonna connect. And Texacom also gives you extra two zones. So it's worked pretty much like an expander, right? Um, so the tamper switch, addressable, uh, speaker out, and it's also have an output. So pretty, pretty good system. Uh, so this pretty good uh, keypad, you know, got a lot of features on it. Um, direct comparison to Honeywell, you don't have much with the MK7 keypad. So, um, and also the prices, uh, when you come to MK7 keypads in Honeywell, they, they come with uh, a bit sort of, they bit dear when you come to the price compared to Texacom. Um, so, you know, I don't want to say anything, but you can do your own research. So let's look at uh, another video. Now that's a uh, different types of PAR I'm talking about, right? Now the previous PAR, we had um, uh, resistors, right? Now we put the resistors ourselves, so, so kind of manually we connected the resistors. Now you don't have to do that. You can now use these uh, jumper settings. You can see the jumper setting on uh, the left-hand side and the right-hand side with different values. Can you see that? 
yeah, 5K, uh, 5.6, uh, 5 4.7, 2K, and it says alarm on the top. And on the other side, you have tamper. Yeah. Again, the same values on the tamper, right? So all you have to do is you take this jumper and then put the jumper to the right value. So if it's a uh, Texacom, you're going to put tamper as 2.2. That's what I've done now. Uh, and then on the ta uh, on the alarm side, I put 4.7. That is your sensor, right? And um, that's going to pick up any any movement there, right? Um, then if you look at um, uh, that one, it's your spring. So that will, if somebody takes the enclosure out, it's going to, and you can also see, um, so I'll go back to the video again. Um, so now you can see here, uh, alarm and alarm tamper tamper. There's two terminals for alarm, two terminals for tamper. Uh, the reason for that is you could do it as a double pole as well, but you don't have to. Uh, so now you see um, just behind this uh, green uh, cable, there is, uh, uh, they, they, there is a small, tiny, in tiny letters, it's written as EOL, end of line. And on the other side of the alarm, uh, the next alarm terminal, you don't have anything written on it, right? Same with the tamper. The first tamper terminal, there's nothing written on the, the last one, obviously the fourth terminal, uh, or the second tamper terminal, you have EOL written on it. So that means you have to use that uh, terminal to run uh, back to the panel, not the other one. So that's where you're going to connect your cable, right? So you're going to see where the EOL is written, or sometimes you may not have that, then you have to refer the manual to find out with this two alarm terminal, which one I should use. You need to find that out with the manual. And then with this two tamper terminal, which one I should use, right? And then you run the cable there, then that go back to the panel, right? Then you have to set the resistor value. Now, when you set the resistor value, this one make it easier. It gives like a jumper setting. You've got the resistor value written on it. So you just, for the tamper, for example, if you're using Texcom system, I'm gonna, I'll leave that on 2.2. And if you're using alarm system, I'll leave it on 4.7. Right. Um, then you see here um, security grade two. So it's a grade two PAR. You see that grade two written? Can 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 you see this? Please let me know whether you can see it or because it's very it's written on a very tiny letter. So I'm a bit worried whether you yes okay that's great yeah. So you can see that's grade two system and you, you will find grade three system as well. So any system that you come across, you clearly see what grade it fall under, right? So let's look at um, um, keypad, Texocom. So now this keypad um, is, is a, a surface mount. You can get the flash mount and then also you can get uh, different type like uh, gold color, chrome, and so on. You know, so you have different types, and they're quite nice keypads. Uh, <clears throat> how do you wire the keypads? Now, this is that you can wire keypad to keypad, um, and then keypad to the. So, if you got two keypads that goes into a panel, and um, uh, so these two keypads are close to each other, you don't have to run a separate cable from each keypad to the panel. You could go from keypad to keypad. Then the, 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 the second keypad, you can just wire it back to the panel. So kind of a bus network, you know, so. So that's what I'm talking about here. Now, when you take the enclosure out, you're going to get terminals like TR plus and minus. So T and R, you're going to use it for uh, your data transmitted, data received, and plus and minus, right? That's the keypad side of it. So that's a kind of overview of how a control panel should be uh, uh, you know, PAR should be wired to a control panel, right? Uh, so this is a, a Texacom uh, Lead 48 panel, which is a grade three panel, right? Um, so if you look into this panel, um, I'm just gonna go to uh, these terminals to explain what these terminals do, right? Uh, to start with, what we were talking about, Louis, is that um, the main connections comes here, right? So you have to use your uh, live, neutral and earth that will be connected here. Then it has to come from an switch fuse per, right? Um, then this is your uh, kind of step down and transformer, which convert AC into DC, uh, plus also it step down from 230 to 12 volt. Uh, so this is a, a DC volt, 12 volt, right? And, and starting from here, what you get here is uh, the right in the bottom is where you get your zones, where you connect the zones, right? Um, 
So that's where you connect the zones. And if you are to connect your uh, laptops, you can use the programmable um, uh, uh, COM port. So that's a COM um, RS-232. And then they, you got the keypads that goes down here. Sorry, uh, just slide that stop me one second. Okay, the keypad right go in the bottom says network. You can see that there. Uh, you got network two, but there's no terminals on it, right? So, you, so but you can you can use the network to connect the keypad T R plus and minus. Uh, then you got auxiliary where you can get power for all your devices, 12 volt. Yeah. So bear in mind you have to get all the power. All the power should be taken out from the panel uh, because auxiliary do come with a fuse. So if you just look a bit uh, up there, you see a fuse, AC blow fuse. So that gives um, that gives the protection for the auxiliaries. Um, then you've got zones. So I've got one to eight zones. Each zone has four terminals here. So you can see two terminals for alarm, two terminals for tamper. Um, but it, this panel is uh, capable of giving you 48 zones, right? Uh, so, so if you, if you want to have 30 zones, um, you, you, you should know that you have to buy expander, right? Put it that way. Uh, so it's, it's, um, it's, um, it, it's, they presume that you're, you're buying it and you know what you're doing, right? So if you think I'm, I'm going to buy 48 zone panel, then I, I can just go there and start wiring 48, uh, you know, sensors to it. It's not going to work in that way. So you, you can only wire eight to this one. And uh, if you then have to expand it, then you have to then start buying expanders, right? Uh, which will be then connected uh, to the network, right? Um, then you got zones. Um, then you see there's two cables that's coming out from our PAR uh, when it comes to the uh, uh, circuitry, right? One is tamper, one is alarm. So let's look at the first one, uh, zone one. So you'll be connecting to the first alarm. Uh, there's two terminals, the first one, very uh, left one. And uh, when you come to the tamper, you'll be connecting to the last one, the right side of it, yeah? So you're only using the first and the fourth. You're not using third and second, right? So that's how the end of line, end of line wiring works in Texacom. But again, obviously it's all written. Uh, you, you will find a manual which explains you this, right? Um, on this side, on the, on the right-hand side, I've got a connection to the bell. Uh, on top of that, I've got a connection to the speakers. Uh, then I've got output. So output that I can program this output, right? So let's see. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about here. Every zone has uh, four terminals, two for alarm and two for tamper. You can see that there. Two for alarm and two for tamper. Well, I prefer to use these uh, boot lace ferrules, right? They're quite nice to sort of use them because these are stranded cables, aluminum cable, and, um, it, and it's quite fiddly, right? So if you use these boot lace ferrules, uh, you could buy them on eBay and you know online stores. Um, they're not very expensive, but you know it, it gives you a solid end, right? So what is bell? SAB. Uh, we call it SAB because self-activated bell. Uh, these sounders are used for uh, notification uh, of an alarm condition generated within an intruder alarm holdup or other alarm systems in response to a command from alarm system control panel. So, uh, so what is SAB self-activated bell? Uh, the the key features of this SAB is SAB bells comes with batteries, right? So it's powered by the main and batteries. The main is your uh, main in the sense the power that comes from the panel is your primary source of power. Then you have a battery as a secondary or backup power, right? Now it's gonna self-activate this the bell um, if either one of this power fails, right? It could be the main or the battery. So that's what it meant by the self-activation, right? So if someone come and cut the cable of a, uh, an alarm system, I mean, in, in, a, in a good alarm system, the cable shouldn't be exposed. You can't, the cable should be concealed. So you, you shouldn't see the cable from outside or inside. But say, say someone managed to find it and they cut the cable. As soon as they cut the cable, um, it's going to start self-activating uh, the bell by using the backup power, which is the battery. So that's self-activation uh, one, right? Sorry, if you're chatting to me, um, okay, if you can. Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. So if you're chatting to me and then I'm not answering it, it's not, it's not that I'm ignoring it, but I'm not seeing it because uh, I'm just, you know, going through the slides now, but I will look at it when I get chance and I'll, you know, come back to it, okay. 
<clears throat> then you, uh, so the connections with Bell also bear in mind a different way to connect Bell to a panel based on your grade. So if it's a grade three wiring, it doesn't work uh, the same way as grade two. Now what you're seeing is a grade two wiring. You've got five terminal um, plus and minus for Bell, which is the power. Then you've got stroke, sound, and you've got tamper. So you simply connect them. You may have to put a loop between uh, tamper and ground um, at the at the sort of panel or at the end side of it. Um, right. So um, then you have a. I mean, obviously, I, I, I thought I would sort of explain you about SCB belts, self-contained belt, right? Uh, what is self-contained belt is uh, self-contained belt. Now, the main feature of uh, sorry, has anyone joined recently uh, to this portal? And then please. Uh, your, your, can you turn off your volume, please? Right. Okay. Thank you. Um, so um, you got you got two types of bells, right? So I go back here. Um, you got SAB and SCB. Now SCB is a self-contained belt. Uh, so the main features of the SAB, as I mentioned to you before, is that it has two sources of power. The primary is from the panel, and the secondary power or backup power is from the batteries. So now I said. Um, you, you know, it's going to set. It's uh, it's going to self-activate if one of these power fails, right? With SCB, it's not the case, right? It can work with uh, one power on its own, right? Uh, so it don't necessarily have to have the main power is normally from the battery, right? And then even if you don't have any power coming out from the main, it it it's, it works, right? Now, what you can uh, um, uh, imagine is, is something like a wireless bell. You know, you have wireless kits uh, like Pyronics and so on, right? They are SCBs. Right, so if you join the course now, uh, I'll, I'll talk to you later, right? So I can't, we started at nine o'clock, so I can't send you all the materials to your email address right now. Yeah, so please leave your email address uh, or send an email to me, you know, so I can I can do that later, right? Okay, if you don't mind, thank you. <clears throat> right, so, um, now, what the difference is, is SAB and SCB. SAB need to have two sources of power, whereas SCB, you don't have to have it. You can just have one power, right? And uh, that can be just battery on its own, right? With the wireless one, because since you, you're, you're kind of restricted of running cables to a wireless system, so the whole idea about having a wireless battery is it's going to be wireless. Uh, so it's, it's predominantly going to, so it's slowly going to depend on uh, a, a battery. So now, the, the, the bell is a SCB bell, self-contained bell. But when it comes to a wired bell, you normally have a jumper that you could set from SAB to SCB. Why they do that is that sometimes if you have four or five bells connected to it, it then goes down to the panel. The panel has one fuse that monitors all these bells, right? So if you, you don't want to overload the circuit, so what you can do is the first two bells can be SAB and the uh, third and the fourth bell uh, then can, can go on a CB, so they now use their battery, right? So we're looking at risk assessment. So uh, this is a important part. Now, normally what I do is I'll do risk assessment first, then I'll come to the wiring. And I thought it's uh, you know what risk assessment is more of theory side of it. So I thought you know we'll we kickstart with the practical, then we come back to this. So I'm doing it in a reverse way. So. Now, this is going to be a bit of a theory to cover, right? Risk assessment is basically, you need to assess the risk uh, for each properties uh, to decide what uh, grade that you'll be installing, right? Uh, so designing an intro alarm system, so conducting a risk assessment is very important uh, to understand the risk associated with the, uh, the, the, the premises. Um, then the outcome of risk assessment would now say what grade that you're supposed to uh, install for that place. And all your findings need to be recorded in a risk assessment. And you have to have this in your paperwork. Um, so when you come to risk assessment, what outcome you're gonna, uh, you're gonna come up with is that you're gonna have four outcomes, uh, grade one, grade two, grade three, and grade four. As I mentioned to you before, um, mostly it's, it will be grade two and grade three, right? So what are the factors? Um, location, building structure, um, existing security measurement like man guarding. I know some of you from man guarding backgrounds, so man guarding, whether you have a security guard standing at there all the time, contains what they have, 
um, security level required, you know, so what type of security level they require. Location, one should assess the risks associated with the location. For example, it's a rural area, suburban area, inner city, commercial, it's all matters, right? How easy to do, uh, do criminal find escape route. Now, for example, if the property is very close to a motorway, oh, um, it's very easy for them to sort of jump onto the motorway. If it's like something, so a property that is in M1, um, you know, you can just jump onto M1, then you can just go right to Birmingham, you know, so from Milton Keys or whatever it is, you know, so, so that's something you need to bear in mind when you sort of assess the risk, right? Um, insurance companies will also set their different risk level for different locations and also uh, insurance companies when they come to commercial uh, they they have their own criteria for example a dentist would have their own uh, they have their own criteria for dentists dental surgeries and uh, off license and so on you know so that's again um, um, so if you, if it's an area that's that's a very rural area that's there's no much uh, you know, happening in the area, then there's no, the bell is not gonna do, uh, you know, a great deal of help for you. It's just, you need to have a, a connection to an alarm machine center, isn't it? So, uh, and also if it's like a place like a farm, uh, bell can cause uh, more problem because if the false alarm bells can go off, it can disturb all your uh, sheep or whatever it is, you know? So it's, it's, it's uh, so you have to sort of, you know, make your logical, uh, you know, uh, assist the logical, uh, assist all the risks and then make your, a logical decision to sort of deciding whether you have to what type of system that you need you know sometimes you have to have bell sometimes you don't necessarily have to have bell you can just connect it to an alarm machine center for a response so when it goes off it then sends a response and uh, then they'll pass on to the key holding or key holder to go and see what's really happening there uh, building structure that's also important to us you know um, whether it's a you know solid brick double brick wall or or, or is it like a you know what type of building is this a barn you know it's all matters to us you know and also any uh, uh existing uh security system they have in place for example cctv access control uh locks you know that all, all matters to us uh, trees overgrown which allows people to climb you know um existing doors and windows how secure they are uh external walls which i mentioned before like you know the brick wall double brick wall stone house and so on you know and then what type of contents they have. Uh, for example, I've come across a dentist, uh, dental surgery, and it happens they have a machine. I don't know whether they use it for whiting the teeth. Um, and this machine costs 70, 70 grand. So, and it, to make it worse, it comes with uh, four wheels. They can wheel it. Um, so it, it is very, so it's, it's very important to understand what they have, you know. Sometimes you may not be able to get exact uh, a number because people don't, people feel very uncomfortable uh, disclosing that information to you. But again, bear in mind, if you're working in this industry, uh, in, in the UK, you have to go through uh, the full comprehensive DBS check. Um, so if someone's got a criminal record, find it harder uh, to find a job or start a company, you know, so you have, still have to be checked. And so, okay, I'll do that, Sam, don't worry. Yeah, I'll do that. Let me just copy your email address. Right, Sam, I would I would send you the details. Right. Right. Then um, again, I was talking about the DBS check. You need to. Uh, it is com it is a must that you have to go through a fully comprehensive DBS check, which can go into the extreme uh, the extent of uh, checking all your financial background and so on. So you know, obviously. Uh, you will come across this once you start sort of looking for a job or you're starting your own company. Uh, you know, uh, it, it, it's it's not an option. Um, um, so I've done a small template for assessment: client name, address, postcode, date, um, the category, contents, description of the premises, existing security measurements. Obviously, there must be some tick boxes here, right? Uh, so I, what they have: access control, CCTV, man guard, and so on. You know, so um, and then previous history. You know. Um, What's the business type? It's important to us because you know a pound shop and a and a pound uh, and a pound broker is two different. It could be just they, they all, you know they might have they might just be situated right next to each of this with a similar type of property, but the the risk risk level associated with these two business is entirely different. You know, so you need to understand the business type. What they you know what 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 is the business model? You know that's important. And then previous history. You know, uh, if there was a, a you know if they had some problems in past, then you know. 
uh, uh, more detail about it. So to help you to sort of, you know, design a system, uh, external wall type, method of signaling, how the signaling works, you know, um, in some places it's very hard to get telephone lines, then the signaling then go through the G, uh, GSM and GPRS. Um, as a, if there is a telephone line, obviously you can use telephone line plus these other communication parts. So you need to understand how the signaling work and what grade that you should go for, you know, so that sort of things are important to you. And then you sign and date, right? Now we're coming to the planning side of it because this is the last segment before we close for today. Uh, so the planning side, um, so this is a small uh, floor plan, right? For a small property, uh, domestic. And um, so I've got my own idea, then obviously you will have your own idea. So how we're gonna see how we're gonna uh, design a system to this place, right? Um, <clears throat> Right now, uh, we we have uh, a different sort of way of designing the systems, right? Um, but again, um, I'm just going to go through uh, a basic sort of designing of a system here. Now, just these are the sort of um, you know uh, uh, the components that we're going to use. Uh, all these symbols are just are made up this one so yeah so obviously these are not standard standardized or anything like that so i just put a triangle for bell um you know whole circle for heat and so on right so um let's start with sort of how we're going to design the system right so i'll put a door context to to the main uh, door right then i've got another two uh, window contacts to protect these two windows the bottom um then i've got uh, a PAR, uh, two PARs, in fact, two PARs in the living area and then and the dining area. Then I've got my keypad uh, right after the dough, right? So if you come into the dough, right after the dough, you have the keypad. And I decided to put the panel in the utility area, right? Um, then I've got a panic alarm in the bedroom. I also have a panic alarm in the living room, right? And so, because if it's an elderly couple, most of the time they'd be spending uh, uh, their time with sort of uh, watching telly and stuff. So I'll just put one panic alarm there. Um, and then what I didn't put is that I could have should have put a heat in, this, in the kitchen area, you know, so that's possible. So I haven't done that. Um, so now I've got, yeah, so that, and then I've got the bell outside, you know, so this is what, and this is what I have. And I also have a second keypad in the bedroom because I, then you could kind of do part set. So in the night they can have the bedrooms and, you know, uh, not, they don't want to set the bedroom in the night, but they still want to set the living area and the rest of the building, you know. Um, so that's, it kind of gives you an overview of how designing should work, you know, so you, you have a flow plan. So it's important for you to, Come up with a flow plan, and if you don't have a flow plan, there are quite a few softwares that you can use or app you can use, which can help you to draw uh, a good flow plan. And then, then you decide where your sensors will be uh, sited. So that's what I've done. Uh, then the next thing is to see define the zones, right? So uh, when you come to zones, you have different attributes, different type of zones, right? You got exit entry, exit entry. Um, then you have guard, guard access, panic alarm. 24 hours, fire, and it, it, it goes on. The list is big, right? But again, the most used ones uh, are these uh, zone type, right? And again, if you go to a different make, uh, they will not call it, ex ent I, I don't know whether they call it exit entry, maybe it's entry exit, but, but it's again, but it doesn't matter. So if you go to um, Honeywell, they don't call entry exit, they call it final, and they call it exit, right? And when it comes to guard, they don't call it guard, they call it intruder, right? So like different companies or different make will have their own way of addressing this uh, zone type. But again, the, the bottom line is they're all talking about the same thing. So what is en entry exit? When you define a zone as entry exit, it automatically gets a delay. So if someone opened the door, they will have a few seconds before they reach the keypad, right? But when you define a zone as guard, it's immediate. So if someone break that system uh, or if someone's walk past that sensor, it's going to set off straight away, right? So, um, so you've got to understand the difference. So 
if he if it's a guard access here, it, it's a it's a PAR, but it's looking at the entry exit. So if someone opened the door, it follow on with a uh, delay. But if someone don't open the door, if they jump through the window, if they get caught by this PAR, it's going to set off straight away, right? And panic alarm is like it's active all the time, regardless of you you set the system or you don't set the system, it doesn't matter. A panic alarm is active all the time and also when you come to the signaling panic alarms goes by a different pin so it it, it asks for immediate attention from a key holder or alarm receiving center that somebody is in immediate danger so that's panic alarm and then you have 24 hours uh, obviously the system is active for 24 hours then you got fire so you got different various sort of zone type so you need to define these zone types um, when you first after you wire the systems Right. So if you then go back to here, then I've, I'm, I'm going to define that before I define the zone type, I need to identify how many zones I have here. Just because you've got two sensors, it does not necessarily mean you have to put them on a separate zone. You, you can put two sensors into the same zone as long as uh, it makes sense to you. Right. For example, I've got these two PARs and I put number two on both sides. You can see that on the, on the floor plan. The reason for me is they both are sort of covering the same area, so there's no point for me to put them on zone one and zone two. So I'm going to put them as zone two. When it comes to the main entrance, I put it on zone one. So zone one, and then I've got two of these two uh, window contacts, I put them on the same zone. And the bedroom and the living room panic alarm, I put it on, on, on the same zone because if a panic alarm is activated, I know a panic alarm is activated. I don't necessarily need to know where in this property, the panic alarm was activated. You know, so obviously, uh, if the panic alarm is activated, somebody is in immediate danger. So I put them on the same zone. So now I only end up having four zones. So you have to think when you zone the place, you don't necessarily have to have every census, uh, you know, put on a dedicated zone. That's not the case. You can just put them in the same zone, right? So this is why what I end up getting for this uh, small system. But again, you might have your own way of doing it. Uh, there's no right or wrong, as long as you, you know, comply all the standards here, right? So that brings to the conclusion of this uh, webinar, right? And if you've got any questions, you can ask me. All right. I know that some of you joined this webinar a bit late right and and you did sort of uh right okay yes okay the remote keypad yeah that's what it means yeah um now it should be rkp i don't know whether i put it rki you know it might be a mistake on my side now if you guys want uh the slides to be emailed to you right um, you have to speak to my colleague, uh, Wale, right? Or, or, or you, you can send him an email. Um, so what I would suggest you to do is that I would send an email to you. I'll put the email on this chat because it's a quite a number of people chatting to me. So it's quite difficult for me to know. Uh, I've, I've taken some of the email address down, but not. I'm not sure whether I've managed to get all of it, right? So this is the email address of our main sort of generic email address that we normally use. Um, so if you send an email with your name and your email address and just say which one, uh, which webinar slides that you require, um, then uh, my colleague will be able to send you uh, these slides. So uh, this is the email address and I've, I'm going to read this email address in case if you can't see, see this chat window, it says S S A L E S sales at CCTV DVR system dot co dot UK. So please take a note of this email address sales at CCTV DVR system. Uh, there's no S system dot co dot UK. Um, and then if you need the slides, um, please uh, send an email. Uh, people who are doing this course, uh, some of you have been sort of like your. You, you have, you're supposed to do the course uh, with us and um, and you, you don't have to worry about it. We will send you the slides because we have your email address and we have your details. So the people who, you know, who sort of uh, 
who don't do um, who, who's not, who not enrolled on any course with us please take this email address down and we can send a slide to you so i've got somebody who just joined now so i'm sorry i shouldn't have let you in because obviously we just completed this webinar um, but again if you've got any questions we, we'll be hosting more webinars soon uh, so if you've got any questions please let me know and uh, uh, our email address is sales at cctv dvr system uk. so I'll, I'll send this to you now um, so what you can do is so everyone in meeting room has the email address so you now you have the email address so if you require the slides to be emailed to you uh just send an email to us uh with your name and your email address and uh and the webinar details so that we can which webinar that you're referring to then we can send you the slides um also we are um launching our new online courses so you see it's kind of a I believe that you get a taster by doing this webinars, but again, uh, we're launching an online course with the qualification, so you could do the qualification online, and uh, most of our qualifications are level two or level three, uh, so you can get, um, complete the whole qualification. Um, and uh, so <clears throat> we'll be sort of sending an email to you, so please let us know if you have, if you, if you, have, if you are interested in doing this course. Um, um, so you have different courses that we're launching. I think we're probably gonna get about four more courses online courses that we're going to launch this month or, or, or next month sorry next month um so if you have any uh questions uh please uh, feel free to send me an email um so i can reply to it um and thank you so much again it's a it's, a, it's just an introduction to the into the alarm side of it i try my level best to sort of explain uh you know about wiring and everything but then we are sort of designing these online courses which will have more interactive videos like what you saw but you have more interactive ones and um, so you could get more understanding of how wiring work um, and also it applies to the access control as well access control and cctv so thank you so much uh, for listening to me and also making the effort to come to this webinar and then we'll have another one soon uh, so please leave your email address or send the email. It's very important you send the email to us. So we have your email address. So we, when we have another webinar, uh, we can send you all a notification uh, or, or invitation for you to join. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you.